Hello everyone, welcome to Isolated Ape episode number 10. Wow, these podcasts are racking up, all good. Uh, this week I'm speaking with Dave Shanks. Uh, Shanks is a mate of mine from our Lanzarote days, which is becoming a bit of a theme. He's based over in Yorkshire now, where he's from originally, him and his wife and his son. Uh, we talk about his son doing a video log, so vlogging while he's uh, on isolation. We talk about missing friends, you know, the you're spending time with a family and, and the sport that we're kind of missing and and uh you know i'm sure there's a lot of people feeling that uh we also have a good discussion about the lanzarote lifestyle and how hard going that was uh props to anyone in lanza who's still living that life man i don't know how you do it um i did it for seven years and i'm still suffering now so <laughs> uh yeah but good times good times um we also have a good discussion about opportunities that are going to come from this isolation you know the other side of it there's going to be business opportunities for startups and there's plenty of people with plenty plenty of time on their hands to go and figure that out now so um you know good conversation i like that part i think that's something that i might try and uh, delve into a little deeper uh, as we talk about on the podcast so um yeah enjoy the podcast and uh give us a follow give us a like let me know where you're watching it from or listening from uh, i'm going to start putting up on youtube i've got no videos of it but i uh, i'm sure i can uh, figure that out but again bluffing this as we go along lads so um yeah enjoy the podcast catch you soon Stay safe. So welcome to the Isolated 8 podcast. Um, I don't know what week we're on. Um, this week we have uh, Dave Shanks. Uh, Dave, what week is it? What day is it? Where are you? What's happening? I don't even know where we're at at the moment, mate. I'm all lost. Um, me exactly the same, mate. Absolutely crazy. Don't know what day of the week it is. I keep forgetting it's bank holiday this weekend as well. Yes, yes. So it's Easter weekend coming up. That's all right. So um, yeah, I've got a four day week this week and a four day week next week. I'm off on Friday and on Monday. So that's lovely. Same for me, mate. Can't wait. What are you going to do? Hang around the kitchen? Hang around the shed? <laughs> well, I've, I've already kind of exhausted the kitchen, mate. I'm, living living room's been exhausted. I'm thinking maybe second bedroom upstairs needs a visit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well. So, it's my... Where are you now at the moment? You're uh, in the UK. Whereabouts in the UK are you based at the moment? Um, a lovely little village called Sherbourne and Elmet, which is kind of between, it's located between Leeds and York. It's about 15 minutes to Leeds, 25 to York. Okay, cool, cool. And obviously we met in Lanzarote and, and in your DJing days, and I see on Facebook you're still keeping busy with the DJing. Um, is that your main kind of everyday life, or do you have a, a, a kind of nine-to-five and that on the side? How does that work these days for you? No, the, well, the, the DJing things come about again uh, since lockdown, really. Um, I got peer pressured into doing a Facebook Live uh, three weeks ago from uh, the cricket boys. I run run a local cricket club and head of cricket there. Okay. And uh, Danny Gunnell, one of our first team, has said, oh, Shanksy, all these DJs are doing lives. Why don't you go and do one? We'd love it. Yeah, did, yeah, the first, yeah. did the first one. I've got um, a garage out the front, which I've converted into a bar. Okay. So I just set my decks up there and away we went. Next thing you know, all of a sudden, there's hundreds and hundreds of comments in there of people saying, this is class, you need to do it every week. Then... I'm now going into week four, uh, just about 2,600 views last, last week, and there was about 700 comments on the live. So it, it was just a good bit of fun of people just watching me play music, getting hammered. So Happy days, man. And that's, uh, that, that, you know, that's decent viewing. You must enjoy that. It's uh, You wouldn't have had that many people in nightclubs, you know, paying to come in and out in Lanzarote anyway. Do you know what I mean? In one night. So, exactly. Uh, and and, and days, it's, it's, it's nice to get back to it as well. I mean, I, I, don't, I, I work for uh, a bank in the UK now. Um, so it's something completely different to, to what I was doing, but I've done that ever since since I came back from Lanzarote. Okay. So um, I've been there doing that for a while now. Yeah, so it's just something different. And what's the situation in the bank at the moment? hours as well, which is weird. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, that that's what the biggest shift for me was with the the body clock. When I first moved to Ireland, I still worked in a bar trade and I really enjoyed it, and and I set up a bar here as well. Um, and you know the only thing for me it was it was the unsociable hours with the kids you know um but then i started doing monday to friday and i was like i actually probably spent more time with my kids when i was working the night hours I, I was just a zombie while i was doing it or i was a bit you know i was a bit tired and and 
not fully focused because you'd been working till four in the morning and you're up with the kids then kind of you know for Sarah used to work uh the day on on kind of Thursday Friday Saturday which was the busiest days in the bar trade you know um and I was getting up then while she was going to work so I was not getting in until four or five in the morning and then up at half seven while she went to work and had the kids through the day and um and then working at night time so that something had to give you know um her mum and dad were really good her mum used to come down and get the kids and give me a chance to get a couple of hours sleep and stuff which was you know great but yeah the uh, once kids come along the nighttime hours and then switch into the daytime hours is certainly something that's uh, a big plus you know yeah it's and, and it's a ma- it is a massive massive change and and you don't realize how much that when you're in that certainly when we were in lanzarote there's so many of us that were kind of living that same sort of same lifestyle of, of kind of waking up late morning early afternoon and whereas other people are like oh my god you're missing the day and it's like yeah but you, your body clock's not yeah, in that routine yeah 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 and and i used to try and explain to people as well that we didn't finish work until four o'clock in the morning you probably didn't finish work until seven o'clock in the morning when you were working nine to eight for example whereas when yeah. we were working in the kind of in the bars it was four o'clock but you know by the time you were out um whereas in the nightclubs it was seven o'clock by the time you were out and then you know, we're working nine to fives now. Do you go home at five o'clock and go to bed? Absolutely n- never. So, you know, you can't expect someone who finishes work at, at seven in the morning to go home and go to bed at seven in the morning. Do you know what I mean? So they need to go home and wind down and do everything else. And then by the time you do get to sleep and get up, you are missing 80% of the day. And then you're going down to some shit takeaway now they're all good takeaways don't get me wrong but like how many takeaways do we i used to eat f- f- six days a week i'd be eating in a takeaway do you know exactly. Probably seven days a week if you're honest it wasn't the healthiest of lifestyles the the amount of drink you're yeah. encouraged to to drink as well while you're at it you know people I, I can't know, get their head around that i don't think when they're in the uk and ireland because of the drinking laws while you're working you can't get smashed while you're working here yeah <laughs> you're encouraged to do so over there and i think i remember there was one winter that I was DJing in nine to eight. I was finishing it, as you say, sort of seven o'clock in the morning. And there'd be three, at least three nights of the week where I wouldn't have a drink at all because I was, I was actually going straight from nine to eight up to Tias and I was going to work for the alley shop window fitting. Okay. So you were doing so I was window up, fitting yeah. till like 12, one o'clock. Yeah. Getting a few hours. Then, I, then I'd get some kip. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that probably worked out all right in terms of, you know, you wind down and you weren't just getting finished straight in from the nightclub and then kind of sitting at home, you know, it probably kept you busy to get to sleep at that time, you know. Um, and the biggest I used difference to find was the kids. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and you had the time to do it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have a kid jumping on you at, at seven on the bed. Seven's a nice laying, I suppose, these days, isn't it? Let's be honest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and how how is family? How is how's family life treating you? Yeah, all, all all is good. Becky's still uh, really well. Uh, we've got a uh, little eight-year-old boy, Jonathan. Now he's full, full of life and full of energy. He's Mr. Personality. He's loves obsessed with technology. He's just started his own vlog, so he's he's oh, okay. loving it. I while while he's in while he's in lockdown, doing a little vlog and telling everyone what's going on. And mm-hmm. he's pu- pulling up my heartstrings last week when he was doing a little video and he was he was telling me how uh, he was looking forward to this summer doing x with his mates and reeled off like three or four mates and then said but because of coronavirus we can't we can't do that and that makes me really sad i just wish it would go back to the way it was and it's like oh my god whoa yeah 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 yeah. they're gonna remember it i mean my youngest is two he won't know any different in you know if this was to stay like this for an extended period of time he wouldn't know any different whereas the older boys would be like yeah i want to go back to what it was before you know um it's uh yeah yeah, it, it does pull in your heartstrings. Money going mad in the background. I can hear them there now. Um, but yeah, that's that's family life for you. Um, but so and the big question, the big question is what what is going to be normality when when we go through when we get through this? Is it it could be completely different different from all anyway? That's it. Yeah, I don't think normality will be the same as what it was no. before. There's certainly going to be kind of wholesale or or change changes that are made now are going to be here forever. You know, there's certainly yeah, going to be yeah. a good view. Um, I don't think I like it. I think I'm, you know, and I worry about it in terms of 
we're all getting segregated and we're all getting separated. I heard a radio story today here in Cork and they were saying that there's been a few clusters of, of kind of, you know, deaths in nursing homes and things like this. And it turned out, so they've got provision centers over here in Ireland, right? So if you're a refugee, before you get your full asylum, you go into these provision centers and you could be there for years and years and years. It's a ridiculous process really, but um, they're up in these provision centers and, it turns out and they can go out and work and stuff but then they go back to this provision center now they're not supposed to go out and work too much because i think they get given food and uh you know fed and watered and and, and housing and everything there but I, I don't know the ins and outs of it but people can go to work as well um and it turns out that they've put it down to there's kind of a, a couple of uh, refugees that are up there that are working in these care homes and seem to maybe it's been pinpointed that they're the carrier you know um but the radio reaction and the fucking and i was like yo man that's not good do you know what i mean like it was very much an us versus them they did it i was like no one's they like boris johnson's got it do you know what i mean like it's yeah every, everyone that no one's kind of to blame here but already i'm starting to see that people are getting tetchy we're nearly a month in now and people are getting a bit tetchy and it's starting to get a little bit finger pointy and i don't i'm it, you know we're still early fucking doors, man. <laughs> That's the thing. You, you, you can't, you can't finger point. I think you, you've hit the nail on the head. Obviously, Boris Johnson getting it is, is, is proof there that there is nobody immune to this. Mm. Um, yeah. And 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 whether we do find answers out in the end as, as, as to whether it, it is whether it be something from a market in China or whether it be something from. Uh, some form of science uh, science uh, lab or something like that, that the other mm. rumour that I'd heard. Whether we find out or not, it's irrelevant, really. We just need to deal with what, what's in front of us. It's these, these idiots that you saw over the weekend that were out sunbathing by, like, lakes and all the rest. It's yeah. like, come on. I, I find that every weekend seems to get lax. Monday to Friday, people seem to be okay. And then at the weekends, it seems to get a little bit more lax, or lackadaisical. I don't like that. I don't, you know. Uh, but then when's it, when is it going to – it's a catch-22 from what I heard from a doctor again on, on kind of the radio here in Ireland the other day was saying that the longer we – stay in the smaller the number will be in peak time which is great but the further away in time it will be as well so you know do you want to wait seven weeks do you want to be three months you know four months in isolation to for a for hundred thousand people to die or do you want to you know have a month in isolation and four hundred thousand people die yeah um, you know i, I think after a while people are like ah well for survival of the fittest let's just let's be allowed out again you know but um yeah i think it's we need to put it into perspective as well it's boredom right do you know what i mean like it's that's all it is it's boredom and i'm sure we can occupy ourselves i see you doing a load of different challenges and stuff like that but uh to, to kind of help with that boredom on 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 social media and stuff and um that's great and it's needed because the reality is if watching netflix and surfing the internet and is and being a bit bored in your four walls is a big big trouble then guess what we're doing all right aren't we do you know on the big fucking scheme of things exactly um, and i don't think there's enough of that at the moment enough reality check of you know you could be living in a tent you could be living under a bridge do you know what i mean you could be in a war-torn country where the coronavirus is killing you but there's also a fucking thing looking over your shoulder and we just don't have that at the moment everyone's like oh man I mean, even myself I've, i was listening to another podcast that i'd recorded there the other day and i'd listened back to it because i was about to release it and i was like you're some cranky little prick really do you know what i mean like stop moaning about being bored and being a bit tired you know so i think it's uh, a bit of positivity is needed too like you know and there's, there's some brilliant stuff out there i mean I, i've got uh through some of the djing i've been doing out in the out in the garage for which turned out to just be starting with friends as i said and then it's all of a sudden every Saturday night now and these random people that I don't know are tuning in and commenting in for requests now. Through me doing that, it's kind of led to me looking at um, some some other stuff on on Facebook and, and there's, uh, there's two or three really, really big groups. And by, by big groups, there's one of them that I think is called uh, Lockdown, uh, I think it's Lock, Lockdown UK or something like that, the, the Facebook group's called, and they've got like over 700,000 people that follow the group. 
And what they do is that they've got a full schedule over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They give every like each artist an hour of allotted time, and like you'll have your different singers, you'll have your comedians, you'll have somebody who'll jump on and do a random quiz. You'll have bingo. There's all sorts going on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally yeah, at your fingertips. Doing a bit of bingo, it. to be fair. Yeah, that's it. It's just having a look and trying not to be bored. And I think it's great that there's all these people setting this up. I think that's what I will take from this. I mean, I set up this podcast. You're back into your DJ, and I've got you know Mindas is setting up. He's he's really digging into the. Uh, I don't know if you heard. You said you listened to his his episode when he was talking about the website maybe for setting putting chefs in touch with people and um, I know he's digging into that a little bit deeper which is great and you know I think there's going to be a lot of yeah, I could end up being just another dickhead with a shit podcast, right? And it might go nowhere. And I'm happy with that. It's kept me busy while I was here. I know when I was, you know, you got onto me the other day when we were, when I mentioned in, in another, in Rory's one about the cost. And I was like, the reality is, mate, it's money that I'm not spending on football or it's money that I'm not spending on doing other things I'd have done anyway. So, you know, it's the cost and stuff like that. When you put it into perspective of what you're not spending because you're not going out all the time, it's, you know, it, you may as well do something with your time, you know? Um, but I'm hoping that a lot more people go down that route and start looking at things that for me, it's kind of, if I can get this to do something in this time and, and I don't know how you're going to monetize it or how you're going to make money out of it to, to keep a family happy. You're probably not, but I think the reality is I've realized I don't need as much money as I thought I did. And what's important is certainly not necessarily that, you know, I spend eight hours a day you got you, at work. You may as well do something that you enjoy and love. I think a lot of people will start thinking that and, um, the people that have lost jobs and that have got nothing else to lose, what have they got to lose by doing something like this or doing something creative or doing something random and trying to sell their wares elsewhere? Um, you know, exactly. I see, I see now as a, I th- honestly think that now is a perfect opportunity for these creative people. I'm not just talking creative for um, podcasts or uh, the, like the Facebook groups. I'm saying I'm talking businesses as well. If people have business ideas, now is the time. Get your head down. Yeah. Plow yeah. yourself, plow yourself into like four, five, six hours a day, like not maybe not even a day, maybe a week of just focusing on what it is you want to do and get out of life. And I tell you what, when we come out of this, there's go- there's gonna be so many opportunities for people to turn the hand to, yeah. for, for for new startup businesses that that That's could it. potentially become massive because everything's gonna change. Do you know? Exactly. So have a think about what you're gonna be, what you think, you know, what you think is gonna be you know the the the, the differences and 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 things that you'll need to help to make those changes into those these these kind of you know these differences a little bit more smooth and work away around that you know even, but even things like i'm gonna do you remember richard wilson the photographer yes i do yeah yeah so i'm gonna have a chat with him uh at some point this week or next week and and again kind of he's doing photography now do you know when and we were over in lanzarote and he was and then he went home and he was working away and he just took a risk he just took a gamble and now he's doing what he wants to do he goes around in nice cars taking photos of them nice watches lovely locations then he's doing formula one and you know it all just built up from him just taking a chance so i really wanted i'm gonna have a chat with him about how we went about it and and you know the realities of it as well because as much as like you said there there's a great point if you put five or six hours work a week into it you're gonna get so far you put five or six hours a day into it you know then that's probably what it really takes to get a business well, up and up and going in you know yeah. but we've got this extended period where you've got that time right so Exactly. Don't don't waste it sitting watching Netflix. Netflix is always going to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah, not. Yeah. It's not. Dis, it's not disappearing. Uh, so utilize utilize the time to 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 do something else. Yeah. I'll be honest. It, it, this it's actually created free time for me. Uh, this 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 period of time that we've got because I've got work which has been exceptionally busy. Uh, working at the bank with it's it's call center based bank that we've had to mobilize so we've had to get everybody out out the working from home yeah, uh, yeah which yeah. Is, which has been a challenge in itself but uh back to my role at, at the cricket club at, at head of cricket there is no cricket for the foreseeable future so yeah, me, yeah, yeah. me trying to get sponsorship me trying to make sure that the club's running and all on all the rest of it there is nothing for me to do yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, for the club. So it's I, I've got that time back, and 
spending the time with, with, with my family and, and seeing Johnny and, and Becky loads more. And we've we've still got the dog. I don't know if you remember Lexi. Yeah, yeah, of course we do. She's, yeah, yeah. she's still going. She was 13 last week. Wow. So <laughs> it's been it's been scary. It, it, the scary thing with her is because I've been at home more, I've really seen how much she's slowing down. Mm. Um, so that yeah, that's... Yeah. That's been a bit upsetting, been at home seeing her, but it's been great to spend that time with her as well. I would have had that before. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And you're a keen golfer as well, right? So obviously that was one of the last things that kind of finished up. Um, Is that the case in the UK as well, obviously, I assume, because I know there's been a few competitions cancelled over the last couple of days, isn't there, that's put a stop to everyone. Yeah, Um, so all all the golf clubs are are, are shut over here. I, I... Lucky if I get out two or three times a year now. Uh, Johnny, okay. my little Johnny, the boy, he goes out. He has his lessons on a Thursday. He's just starting. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to get mine into it actually. My, it. Yeah, yeah. My oldest fella uh, has got Asperger's. He's got no interest in team sports really. Well, I say that he's got into basketball recently. Now, part of his kind of stimulation for himself is that like he bounces a ball around and it's really good for him. So then he started going to basketball and um, he's okay at it. To be fair, he's decent enough and he enjoys it. That's the thing. It's the first team sport that he's ever had any interest in. Um, But I was kind of trying to edge him down the golf route because of the fact he's not a team sport, you know? Um, And then my middle fella, he plays hurling um, here with, with the local team. Um, So he's used to swinging kind of at a ball, um, but he's a lot easier. It's a lot easier off the floor than it is than trying to throw it up in the air and smash it the length of the pitch while five other fellows are trying to batter you with the with the hurley so um you know he's not he, he's another one that's not massively into the contact sports and the rough and tumble so uh I, he started swinging a golf club his granddad's a keen golfer and I, i'm starting like i've stopped playing soccer now obviously with this uh coronavirus outbreak but i think this is the stop that i needed to be able to stop do you know um yeah so I think I'm going to move more into golf now and wait and away from the soccer. It's uh, yeah, my fitness and is. Whilst, going to be... whilst it's still an individual sport, it's, it is a great social. Exactly, social yeah, and that's what we golf. want. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, we want. We, I want them to have the social side and the group of fellas that you meet weekly, and you know, and what have you, and then go into the pub after and have a couple of pints. But um, I just can't see them doing that through soccer and other kind of team sports at the moment. Now they're very young, you know, they may change, and but. Um, yeah, no, I think if they can get into golf a bit early, it's uh, it's a good sport to get into. You know, it's uh, a lot of business it's, done on a golf course, mate. <laughs> it is. It, it's, I, I took up golf when I was about 12, 13. Okay. I, worked at, I worked at a golf club for four years before I got into DJing. And uh, it, it's, it still sticks with me. And I'm still, when I go out and play, I, I don't play particularly well to my for my, where I'd like to play myself. But... Yeah. I'm still because of the standard I played at. Still play to a better than average standard. So I still get, I still play okay. Um, and and it, and it hopefully I'm I'm hopeful in the not too distant future. It'll be great to get out and hit a golf ball with the boy as well to be out there with him and hopefully yeah, see him yeah, him yeah. get to that level would be be amazing. I'd absolutely love it. But, but yeah, yeah, was, was, what certainly was my first love was golf. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and what are the, I mean again, I'm looking on the Facebook page and I see a few of the challenges that you were doing. I saw you, you know, doing the keepy uppers with the football, and then with the golf club, and then doing the head, shoulders, knees, and toes, and the catch. And uh, is obviously I can see your stuff, but is there many of your lads getting involved in that? Is that something that's kept going? Is it, you know, you're happy with that? Yeah, there's a couple of them, and the the challenge and the first challenge came from uh, another one of the local cricket clubs, uh, Woodhouse Greens, that I uh, have an association with. Uh, through a lot of mutual friends and uh, a few of their lads have, have got on board. They've uh, actually disputed my first video saying that it wasn't out because apparently I grounded the ball when I fell on the floor. So uh, <laughs> and that one had to be remade and uh, redistributed around. Uh, but then there's another challenge come out today. So I'll be out in the garden this afternoon. Uh, Stuart Broad, England cricketers, uh, been out in his back garden and he's thrown his, uh, his England baggy cap down, matched uh, six yards away. And then chipped six balls to see how many balls he can get into his hat. He didn't get one ball in, so okay. I'm hoping I'm hoping to get at least one ball in and send that to him. Yeah, I'm sure you'll have a few attempts at it as well, though. It's not going to be a oh, live yeah, video, is it? <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely not. It'll be like take 25 when five of yeah, them go yeah, in and yeah, yeah. editing them all to land in together. Yeah. Oh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Have that, Stuart. 
exactly fair play fair play um okay and then kind of tell us what you're you know what you're looking forward to getting back to what are you uh, you know have you got any I, I i know that the bank's busy and the bank will always be busy so i mean is there any ideas that you're looking at and and keen to get into now any kind of changes you're thinking of making due to this kind of time at home uh as i think that the, the big one's been it's been great spending the time with with the family or more time with the family and and i'm hopeful that that the bank goes in the direction of uh now we we have more flexibility and more home working that we have that that ability to continue because it would be great to to be around at home a little bit more would you want uh, to do it five days a week no i won't i won't want to do it five days a week yeah I'm, i wouldn't be able to at all i'm fine the biggest thing I, I, i'm i'm a real people person and i find it really really hard having all my meetings on zoom with my team um and then i'm going i just feel as i'm bouncing from meeting to meeting to meeting and then i'm just having to send them a quick uh, message on messenger just like hi how are you and i, and I don't like yeah. that yeah yeah, I really, yeah yeah i really really don't like it i've been very conscious of making a lot of calls with my team and making sure i'm getting around and chatting to them throughout the day rather than the odd ping here and there now i've got two new hires so i had a new hire start two weeks ago and we like so i had a chance to kind of run through it with him of getting him on board with um getting him on board remotely which was a, t a challenge and a task and then i've got another two that started um this week so i um again been remote working and and on boarding at the same time which has been a challenge i'm very much a man in a room with a whiteboard and explaining what we do and why we do it and um you know doing that just verbally i've had to get a couple of the the tech guys involved to kind of do demos and stuff um but yeah again it's all adaptability and learning you know and and i think now that we about the, the tools that i sell are really good and the team you know the tools that we have help people with remote work so it's uh we haven't slowed down at all if anything we're, we're actually doing quite well um out of this so um which is not a great thing in some terms but it keep you know it keeps me busy and 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 there's plenty of work there so uh, you know we're blessed in that regard when when you think of people that have lost their jobs but um remote work all the time i don't know I'd, if if well to be fair like if i could move if we had the freedom to move around again and i could move somewhere sunny uh well, you know and get get a few more for a big a bigger house for the same price that i'm paying here in ireland um you know you'd be laughing uh that's often something i spoke about so mindas did that mindas was living in uh in dublin with his girlfriend and then he got a remote working job he's, that's why he's living in valencia now you know for the for the same money that he was getting a one or a two bedroom apartment you know with no garden in in dublin he's getting a five bedroom villa with a pool and a load of land um i'd, I'd happily do that if if, if it became full-time work from home uh, I'd, I'd only be down for it if we could uh move somewhere within the same time zone <laughs> well yeah i know, we, be, we, yeah, you know. We, we've <laughs> spoke about many times about moving back to lanzarote but it's got to be it has to be the right the right time and and for the right reasons mm -hmm. um as in I'd, i would have to have a business that i would either have the ability to do remotely or yeah. walking into the right business over there and yeah, our, be yeah. our, our best mates live there yeah, and yeah. phil and garrett obviously we we meet up when we go on holiday there once twice a year and we generally try to get away we were due to be uh in edinburgh uh not the opening weekend or always the, the weekend after yeah yeah yeah. Uh, then obviously this is this has kicked off but that that's that's always the killer for us is that they're there we're here and mm. living life again but it's similar to to me at work and and seeing people i'd rather see people face to face, to face and uh as missing out on on seeing phil and garrett's been that that's been a massive massive downer for us because we've been busted i've not seen them since steve and lisa's wedding last february okay it's a long time becky, got, becky, becky got becky got over in december for a long weekend uh but yeah it's been over a year since since i've got together with them so yeah that yeah. was that was a bit of a downer i get that yeah and and you know um we i got together with a, you know a couple of my best pals there drew and annalise recently enough well i say recently enough we it's been a lot more over the last couple of years with my work and the travel i travel to london quite a bit and get a chance to um meet up with them you know which is good so um but before that it was it was very few and far between i'm just hoping we can you know i just don't think travel's gonna happen and i think in, over in the uk have you been told any any travel kind of this year cancel it 
Uh, originally, it was 30 days from uh, lockdown, and then the Foreign Office announced last night uh, that all travel should be indefinitely stopped. Uh, and I know that um, Jet 2 have announced, I think it's the 18th of June, before they're going to put any flights back on. Okay. But yeah, we were again, meant to fly it on that. the... Yeah, no, me neither. We were meant to fly the beginning of June, and that's certainly not going to happen. I'm just waiting for that to be... It's in our head, it's cancelled. We're not going anyway, do you know what I mean? I just don't think... Um, I think they've yeah, been cautious we'll, as well, because we, we were looking at flights last night uh, to Lanzarote for Christmas, and we can get mm-hmm. return flights for £100 each. At Christmas, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, they don't expect that to happen. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah There's nowhere. That. I think the cheapest we've had at Christmas is about 1,100 quid for the three of us, so yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. anticipate 300 quid return for three of us. Well, that'll tell you what they're thinking, <laughs> won't it? Yeah. 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 And that's, okay. that's Christmas Eve as well, so no. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. In for the long haul, lads. We're in for the long haul. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so Shanksy, where will we find you on um, where will we find you on Facebook? Is it? Uh, I'll tr- I might even put a link to this to your Facebook page for your uh, your lives. I'll have to go back and do that with Rory's as well because that'd be a good idea. Actually, I should start doing this. I'm just bluffing this now. You know that, right? So we've actually had back and forth conversations. I I hundred percent am doing way more work than I need to do for this. I'm using too many different formats and I'm piecing it all together. And I know it can be streamlined. I just but it's don't coming know out how great though. Yeah, we're and getting it. And I, exactly. And and I was chatting to Sarah and I was saying, you know, there is a way and I'm sure there's someone who could within 10 minutes just go bam, 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 just do that. Um, but then what's the fun in that, right? I want to kind of discover it myself and try and figure it out. I think SoundCloud That's is true. going to get sacked right off. But then I know I've got some like the stats on it are saying that there's a good few people listening on that and I don't want to lose them either. So I can find out who they are Um, because you introduced me to anchor. So I know that anchor FM forward slash isolated hyphen ape comes out as a, as a pretty much a website or a link to that. And then it take, takes you to Spotify. Um, And then all the kind of the stats and stuff will be on anchor. Um, At the minute I've got some stats from SoundCloud, some stats from anchor, but then the SoundCloud versions are actually, fairly shit like in terms of i've put a bit of music in front and i've started doing kind of intros then a bit of an intro music and then into the podcast whereas on soundcloud it's literally just the podcast so i think i need to do a bit of social media um letting people know that i'm gonna sack off putting things up to soundcloud and just to listen on anchor fm if you don't have spotify because then it's just a web browser to get there you know um yeah I think that might be the easiest way to start doing it, but I don't want to get on social media, Shanksy. I shave my beard off, mate. I feel naked. <laughs> I had to shave all my beard off because um, <laughs> I was told of, for hygienic reasons that, you know, germs and viruses can stay in beards and stuff, shave it off. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then like the fourth person said it to me. I was like, I'm just going to take this bad boy off. So, um, yeah, I look sick, like in terms of not like, you look sick, brov, as in you look sick, <laughs> you need to go to a doctor. Um, <laughs> and I'm not sick, I'm f- fairly well. I'll just, like, yeah, I shaved all my head, which is the usual thing, but now I've taken half of my chin off. Um, my head looks really small. It's uh, I don't look well. So I'll be doing no social media for the next few weeks, mate, until this bad boy grows back again. Oh, man. Yeah, I've not seen this chin for about 15 years, and it's had a that twin is- in that time, mate. I've got two now. <laughs> uh. I've, I've got several twins, mate. I won't worry about it. It's all fun and games. Listen, Shanksy, it was lovely to speak to you, mate. We've hit the half an hour mark, so that's perfect. I'll um, I'll try and, I'll, uh, like I say, I'm figuring this out as we go along, but I'll try and tie in your uh, uh, the link to the Facebook so people can watch the, the DJing on the Saturday night and uh, have a little boogie while they're at it, you know? Um, cool. Love to the family. Stay safe, and uh, thanks for your time, and I'm sure we'll be in touch again soon. I want to kind of revisit people a few weeks down the line and see how stressed they are then, if that's all right with you. Yeah. That's fine, mate, and uh, you are doing a top job. These are great. I'm loving listening to them and listening and catching up to some people that, that I know personally and some people that I maybe know of. So, no, keep doing the good job, mate. It's good to hear everybody's thoughts on what's going on. So, keep going. Perfect. Cheers, bud. Take care of yourself. All right, mate. See you soon. Bye-bye now. Bye.